It's another beautiful fall Saturday in my country home and I love waking up very early on weekends to make a special Trini breakfast. Today's breakfast of aloo pie is essentially dough filled with savory, well-seasoned mashed potatoes and then deep fried. Eaten alone or with mango, tamarind chutney or kuchila or hot sauce, it's out of this world. It's everyone's favorite comfort food in my house, even pumpkins. Perched on her favorite spot, she loves to join in on the breakfast activities. Aside from the flour, salt and baking powder needed for the dough, today we'll be using organic russet potatoes, onion, garlic, any combination of peppers, bird pepper, habanero, scotch bonnet, pimento or cherry pepper. Today I'm also using bandanya, also called shadabani. If you don't have that, you can use scallions or cilantro. To begin, we'll place about 8 cups of water over medium-high heat in a medium-sized pan. Then we'll scrub and rinse the potatoes and place them in the pot with boiling water. Place the potatoes in the pot, bring it to a boil, lower the heat to medium and cook it for 30 to 40 minutes or until fork tender but not overcooked. In a bowl, add the flour, salt, baking powder, a little bit of sugar if you're using. Mix it well to combine. Gradually add water and knead the flour to form a soft, smooth dough. Now pay attention to my various techniques. I personally devise these techniques to give us the best, most consistent results every time. Sharing this clip in real time to guide you along whenever you need a helping hand. If you've seen my other videos, you would know that this is the squeezing method. It's the easiest way to bring the flour together. It also prevents you from adding too much liquid to the dough. Now we will employ the rolling technique. Roll it and roll it and roll it around. This technique helps us to make it into one ball, one cohesive piece of dough. It also prevents us from folding over, which can make your dough stiff. Next, we're moving on to Rhea's knuckle press method. We're going to knuckle press 10 times, turn it over, and knuckle press another 10 times. Bring the dough together, and then we'll do the rolling method again. And we'll repeat the rolling on the knuckle press until the dough becomes somewhat smooth. Towards the end, rub about one tablespoon of butter, good quality butter or oil over the dough to help keep it soft and let it rest for about 10 to 30 minutes, all depending on how much time you have.
While the flour is resting and the potatoes are still boiling, let's mince the garlic, the bandanya and the hot pepper. We'll use a food processor or a mortar and pestle. We'll add the onions too and we will pound it to bring out all the flavors in these delicious ingredients. Course is quite okay as well. Time to strain the potatoes. Peel it once they cool, or you can use one of those potato mashers thingy. My sister gave this to me three years in a row for three Christmases, and I've finally decided to use it here. There was no peeling required, and it finished in record time. Add the seasonings to the potato along with salt and roasted jeera, also known as cumin, and mash it. Till all the ingredients are thoroughly combined, taste and add for more salt if you wish. Now it's time to make the balls. I divide the dough into three, making three loyas. Each loya I divide into four. If you want smaller aloo pies, you divide each loya into eight. That sounds too technical, just make little balls to the best of your ability. Once you've formed small balls, let them rest about 10 to 15 minutes and then they'll be ready to work with again. I'm making 10 large and 4 small aloo pies. As you can see here, I did not allow my dough to rest, so it's springing back. And this is a sign that it, you need to let it rest for additional 5 to 10 minutes. But I'm going to push through today. You can press it out with your fingers or use a rolling pin. Do not roll it out too thin or too wide because it's more difficult to manage that way and you risk creating holes in your dough. Next, add about 3 tablespoons of your aloo potato mixture and stuff it in together to seal it. If you struggle with potato all over the place, this is a technique that will help keep it together on the dough, making it much easier to fold and seal. Press the ends together, keeping the uh, potato mixture inside and pinching it to seal all around. You can do this vertically or horizontally, flat down, whatever is easier for you. Next, we're going to roll and fold flour to keep it sealed to prevent it from spilling potato and dirtying your oil. This is the best technique to keep that potato in. I have tried water and flour and using a fork and it definitely doesn't help. Next, we will press to distribute the potato or the aloo evenly throughout the aloo pie. Once it's evenly distributed throughout the pie, then tug at opposite ends to elongate or make your aloo pie a little longer. Longer is better. Certainly more for me and you. Here's my teen Dari helping with her favorite breakfast and she's doing a great job considering she only saw me do this once. Between her and her dad, there is never enough aloo pie for anybody else. Let her know how she did in the comment section below, and if she can do it this good her first time, you can do it too. So send me pictures of your aloo pies. Now after all that work, it's time to fry. Heat about two cups of oil in a small Dutch oven or heavy bottom pot or frying pan. Add a small pinch of dough. The oil is ready when it floats and darkens. Gently place the filled dough in hot oil, two at a time if the pot is big enough. Using a spoon, continuously pour hot oil over the dough. When the bottom is golden brown, Flip and cook the other side until golden brown as well. Drain on the side of the pot and place in a single layer on a paper towel lined platter. Cover with a paper towel and then a kitchen towel to keep it warm and soft. Now 
Keep in mind that you can make these as light or as dark or as large or as small as you wish. It's great to have someone helping you in the kitchen. If not, turn the stove on low while you're filling the dough. I recommend doing two at a time. Repeat until all the aloo pies are fried. And for those of you who have asked me if you can bake the aloo pie, here is your result. It's a little tough and crunchy, but still edible and tasty. I think that can be remedied by adding a little yeast to your dough, but that's a whole other recipe. 